In this video, we're going to take a look at some strategies for investigating inequalities, particularly those you might encounter in Algebra 2 class when we start looking at quadratic and cubic functions. So I have a cubic function all set to go here, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 1. And I'm going to show you some uh, different strategies you can use to get kids to understand uh, the ideas of a solution set to an inequality. So first of all, I have this uh, cubic all set to go here, and I have it graphed and ready to go here. So it's an interesting looking graph. What I'd like to know is, at what point does this function take on values greater than negative 1? That is, when is y greater than negative 1? So first of all, in Desmos here, I'm going to set it up as y equals f of x. You'll notice what that does here. It's overlaid a green graph right over top of my orange graph. So we have some contrasting colors. So the orange is still there, just overlaid a green over top of it. But I'm going to use a range restriction here to try to show off the parts of the graph just so y is greater than negative 1. And the way we do any type of restriction in Desmos is we use braces. I'm going to tell it y is greater than negative 1. And look at what's happened here. We get this nice little action here right in the middle where the green part of the graph represents just those parts of the graph that have a y value greater than negative 1. But at the same time, we still have the orange graph here lurking in the background. So the kids will understand that this is part of a larger function. So here's our solution set, or at least a visual representation of the solution set, versus the overall graph. So you might want to ask kids, how could we express the solution? How many solutions does it have? How were they arranged? And think about the set notation. So using a range restriction is one way uh, to try this. Another way to try this is to look at a function table. So I'm going to go up to the top here and I'm going to look at a function table. And instead of x and y, I'm going to look at x and f of x here. And notice it put in 1, negative 5. And you could ask your students, does this represent a solution to the inequality of if f of x is greater than negative 1. And since it's down here in the orange part, it does not. But how about if I plug in a negative 1 for x? Well, here I see a point that is in the green section. So that would be a solution. Negative 1 is a solution. How about 5? Is way up. Well, way up here. Let's pick a better one. Let's pick 3. There we go. So I can see better. 3 is way down here. I can see that it is not a solution. And you might want to challenge your students to use Desmos perhaps to come up with three points that represent solutions to the inequality, and three that are not solutions to the inequality. So that's another way to get students involved. Here's one last way to, to do what I like to try. What if instead of f of x, let me do f of a, f of a, and I'm going to put a slider in. And notice what happens here. I get this nice little slider. If you haven't played with sliders on Desmos before, it's a nice way to explore things. And all it's doing is it's plugging these values in for a into the function here and giving me the output values. I notice some of them get really large because we're cubing things. But I'm going to add something to this mix. Instead of just f of a, I want to know if f of a is greater than negative 1. And look at what I have now. I get true false outputs now. So apparently when a is negative 5.7, if I plug that into the function here, that does not come out as greater than negative 1. I get a false statement. Let's find one that's true. Ah, true. Negative 0.8. Negative 0.8, well, that's right around here. Ooh, that is in our true part where the function comes out as greater than negative 1. So you could have students play around with this. Again, try to hone in what are the domains under which this function comes out as greater than negative 1. So a couple different strategies for investigating inequalities. I hope you find some use for them in your classroom.